the modern foot soldier is not stopped by snow, cold, or rugged terrain. Moving, fighting, living in deep snow and extreme cold are all part of the day's work for men who know what to do and how to do it. A ski trail is broken out several hours before the advance of the main body of an infantry rifle company, now in a regimental reserve area, preparing to start out on a special two-day combat mission into enemy territory. Skis are conditioned for heavy going over cross-country terrain. Hot pine tar is applied as a protective coating. Care is taken in loading the Accio, which is used for carrying equipment over snow and ice as the company prepares to make itself self-sufficient on the march. When the temperature is low, water canteens are protected against freezing, and having the canteen not quite full keeps it from cracking. The rucksack makes carrying easier and balance on skis better. Free movement is essential. Extra ski tips are taken for emergency. Items are stowed systematically for quick unloading and quick use. Heavy articles go in first and to the rear. Lighter ones go on top. The Accio is a type of toboggan with rounded shallow bottom gives great mobility. Loads are covered and lashed. Everything must be man-drawn or man-carried. Skiers harness themselves in tandem to an Accio. The Accio carries up to a 200-pound load. The trail breakers leading the way to the enemy outpost have their job cut out for them. Breaking a trail is slow work. A two-track trail would do for ski troops, but a three-track trail is required for the Accios. White trousers with the dark tops make best camouflage on this kind of mission. Brush and bows are cut away for easy passage. Rotation of jobs evens up the work. There are no star parts. Everyone takes his turn as leading man. Men are relieved before they become overheated or exhausted. Turnabout applies to squads as well. The second squad will take over while this squad drops back in reserve. The trail breakers come to an obstruction. The squad leader signals to detour around it. The trail is marked to guide the company. Number one makes the turn needlessly wide. Number two sees this and cuts off the curve, shortening it. All trails are kept as short as possible. The company commander maintains a double check on direction as the main body of the company swings along the trail. Trail breakers are responsible for maintaining direction of march and log of march. In extreme cold, the dry compass gives best results. The liquid filled may have sluggish action. Pace setters establish a steady rate of march, but the movement of each skier is flexible within the column so that adjustments to maintain pace can be made gradually and changes in terrain can be taken in stride. Even in extreme cold, when we exercise, we sweat. Expect it. Excessive perspiration in very cold air brings on chill and frostbite. Guard against it. Controlled ventilation of garments helps. But remember to button up even when the column stops for only a short rest halt. Clothing is determined by the task. In general, wear heavy dress for light work, light dress for heavy work, and when you stop, button up and save that heat.
Frozen lakes provide natural trails. Tracks are kept within concealing shadows when possible. Trees throw very long shadows in the north. A broken ski pointing. In case of mishap, the column is not held up. And a soldier is never left alone in extreme cold. They'll fall in with the column again or overtake it at the next rest halt. The company takes its midday rest halt. Parkas are put on to keep from chilling. Skis are wiped off before snow freezes on them. In cold and snow, the individual carries great personal responsibility. Skiers check each other for frostbite. Cheeks, nose, ears, all extremities are vulnerable. Frostbite doesn't always ring the bell before it drops in. Unless someone tells us, first awareness of frostbite may be when we stop feeling the sting of the cold wind. Never use snow on frostbite. Thaw it out slowly by the heat of your hands. Never rub. If hands are frostbitten, thaw them out under the armpits. Sip water. Don't gulp it when tired or overheated. Hot chow and hot coffee brought up from the base. Insulated containers hold food hot for 12 hours or more, even in coldest weather. Hot food on a cold march builds morale. Food will stay hotter if eaten right out of the can. Try not to sit on snow. It melts on the clothes and lessens insulating qualities against the cold. Obstacles are taken on a broad front by multiple tracks. No time is lost. The rear man braces himself and acts as a brake. Our trail breakers come to a frozen stream. Frozen streams often have overflows of water, even in coldest weather. The ice cracks, water underneath seeps up and is prevented from freezing by the blanket of snow. If a quick detour is possible, it is made. If not, a bridge is laid on the ice to prevent wet feet and frozen skis. Work is started on the needed bridge. The work progresses. Bows and snow make a firm packing. The bridge is completed. Now feet and skis are kept dry in crossing. Weapons and skis are left outdoors. If taken inside, moisture condenses on them. Keep track of equipment. Small articles especially have a way of disappearing in deep snow. Or if left on the snow, even a light wind drifting the snow is enough to cover them and wipe out all traces. Bows placed under sleds keep them from freezing to the snow and ready for a quick start.